Dude, I love popcorn, bro. I don't how is it a, it's not a vegetable, but no other I mean corn is, but no other think about it. No other vegetable can do that trick that corn does. And just say, bam, you don't if you look at a thing of corn, you don't know that that magic is in there. You don't know nobody. If you know, if you know, five hundred years ago, or even two hundred years ago, they gave you know maybe seventy people. If they they asked seventy people, write down what do you think is inside of this corn. I bet none of them write sheer damn joy, magic, snack, popcorn. That's the thing; they don't know what's in there. They don't know. They don't know what's in the kernel. They don't know, you know, people, they, 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 not every, you can't always see the magic. You can't always see that magic. And good ang, boy. Good ang, orang. You can't, come on, you can't tell me. Dude, if you put five or six little popcorns in your hand, you can't even feel it. That's how beautiful a little, just a little creature that's a little snack of source, and you just let that popcorn climb into your mouth. And it's crunchy and it's naughty too. Some of it's strong and some of it's it pops a little when you eat it. Get yeah. Come on, boy. But nobody knows the magic that's in there. The people can't, you know, they just they don't know the magic that can be inside of, of us. People don't know it. You know, sometimes you just, you can't judge a vegetable by its, by its cover, really. You really, really can't. Let's go. And we don't even have any intro music today. Because why? I forgot my computer, and that's how we do it. We hook it up, and, and I forgot it. Um... I just got back in from Sacramento and, and uh, in Las Vegas. And today's episode, though, I got to tell you, if your junk is getting kind of whiskery, sometimes you pull down your pants and you, you know, and you got you, you got that little, you know, the fellas they got that not that uh, they got that that it looked like a little um, ant eater. They got that ant eater, and it starts to get a little like it's been um, hiding in the woods. It gets a little mangy. You got you got a lot of hair, a lot of whiskers. Looks like you like your wiener's been kind of going to see fish concerts, or maybe eating grilling cheese. And and I love a grilling cheese. And if you haven't had one of these, just my God, it's like somebody just took two squares of bread and just just it's like the Lord just licked each square of bread and just. And just put them bad little bastards together. And if you put two beautiful pieces of bread together long enough, bruh, they do that. They make that grilling cheese in between them. But yeah, sometimes your wiener, if you haven't taken care of it, it looks like a. It looks like it's you know been out in the yard. It looks like it hasn't been doing stuff. You know, you got to manicure it. And that's why uh, support for this past weekend comes from Manscaped. Manscaped is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Look, you don't want to take off your uh, pants and, it's, you know, and your area looks like a, like a bunch, you know, like, the, like somebody hadn't hired a, somebody to do any maintenance. You know, sometimes you'll see a guy, he trimmed one, of it, you know, one half of his junk and the other half, you know, looks like a damn riverbank. And you're like, what? They even got a couple trout lines coming off of it. That's not the way to do it, fellas. So Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Uh, and I and look, they got a beautiful, they got this one tool. It's called the um the plow. And the plow, you can really, oh man. Oh my lord, 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 lord. I mean, you feel like an indentured servant out there just whacking these hairs away. It's real, real medieval. Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 2.0. Inside the Perfect Package, you'll find their electric trimmer called the Lawnmower 
2.0. Now, 99% of the time I say, as I always do, do not put a lawn mower near your nuts and near your body. You know, don't mow in the yard with your pants down. That's brave as hell. If you see somebody mowing naked with a push mower, don't call the cops, man. Pop some champagne. Because as a man, having your nuts out that close to a spinning blade, I mean, there's your bet your your chance Armstrong right there because you're taking a real, you're really putting the opportunity a risky opportunity on the line. But uh, but the the lawnmower 2.0, it's uh, it's waterproof, it's skin safe technology. It'll protect you from nicking your sack. You can also create less mess by trimming in the shower. Now that's beautiful. A lot of things you can't use that. You can't use a, a you know that electrical deal in the shower. So uh, let's not forget about the crop preserver. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer because you want that soft batch. You don't want to show up with them, um, you know, them chips ahoy's really them hard them. You know, a couple moles on your balls. You want them. You want that soft batch. So you got to moisturize that bag. And of course, let's not forget about that crop preserver. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant around your newts, bruh? It's time to get clean with the Perfect Package 2.0. Get 20% off from Manscaped. And free shipping with the code THEO, T-H-E-O, at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And I'll do a thing. I'll bend over because a lot of hair will gather kind of between my legs, almost along that back strap. And if you ever died in a plane crash, something that a lot of people would eat or cook off of you is that area, sadly, between, you know, that b-hole, that back jaw, and your nuts, and the baseline of your nutsack, where your nuts really just kind of start, where, because really your nuts just, at the top of your nutsack is just your body. So they, you know, your body just kind of turns into your nuts. But, um, but anyway, what I'm saying, I think, Jesus, I don't even know, is that, um, that I get down there and they'll have a whole bunch of hair will co- get right there and I'll get right there with that with the different tools that they offer at Manscaped and really clean uh clean up my package. Especially if you're going through a divorce, you're single. You know, you're lo- somebody, you know, you were seeing somebody they're in a coma now. You got to get back out there. So freshen up your batch. You know. Um But yeah, isn't that interesting about corn? You would never think it if you look at it. You would never think the magic that could be in there. You would never. And man, I go to, uh, you know, we've been going to the children's, uh, Ronald McDonald Children's Center and doing movie night on Tuesday nights. And man, seeing all the kids, they handicap some of them and they got, you know, uh, you know, IVs going on their arms and, you know, and there's some of them are, you know, their body, they have a deformity. But man, you break that popcorn out, man. They, some of them don't even have a full finger, oh, five fingers, and they, and they, but they, they suddenly every hand looks the same when they reach in for that magic. But you don't know a mat, you don't know the magic that's in a kernel, man. And and people don't know the magic that's inside of us or inside of you. They don't know it. But I believe that we all have something special in us. Uh, you know, I'm feeling pr- I'm feeling pretty good, man. I, ha- I had some good shows this weekend. Just got back from Las Vegas. Literally just got back about an hour and a half ago. And, uh, and man, it was fun. If you were at that show, whoo, people came out. People came out. And we had a mother-daughter that came out, this woman Dorothy, and her, da- her and her daughter came out and, Man, it just really makes me feel good. I see the see some family connections. You know, to just see a mother and daughter enjoying something together. 
and and even though it happens to be my comedy or that they're or my you know I'm part of their evening, just to see them doing something special together and caring about each other, um, it makes me feel good, man. It makes me feel like I'm on the right track, that we're on the right track by doing this uh, this little this group that we're doing. Do we had a father, son, and mother come out and in Sacramento, the young guy is a He's a he does backflips and gravity defying activity, you know, dark arts I call it really. You know he work he do he does he works on a scooter and does that kind of stuff and they came out. We had a father son that came out in Sacramento. Um, you know we had a guy who, who came up to me in Vegas and he said, "Hey man, you you shouldn't you got to stop being so hard on yourself." And I really resonated with that guy just telling me that and. And, and people tell me that a lot, and sometimes I can't hear it. And that's kind of funny. Isn't that funny? Sometimes we can't hear, like 70 people will tell you the same thing. But for some reason on the 53rd time, there's somebody kind of breaks through whatever's going on with you, and and you're in a moment where you're, where you're able to accept it. Uh, and it, I had a little bit of that, man, and... And I just, yeah, I woke up this morning thinking, you know, every, what if everything's okay? What if I quit this little dirty circle in my head and everything's just okay? And man, that made me really feel good. And But yeah, a lot of great people. I want to thank everybody that came out uh, in Sacramento over there and, and in um, Las Vegas. And, and Las Vegas, man, they had some real drunks out there, boy. They had one dude at the end of the night, he was, uh, they had like a little in the hotel, it was probably about 2 a.m., they had a, I don't know what it was, it was like a, well, he thought it was a wishing well, and it wasn't, it was like a, um, just a, like a, like a wall where they had some water going down it. And it was like a like just you know part of the scenery in the casino. They you know sometimes you'll go over a little bridge and and this dude's sitting there just making wishes off this bitch. I was like, dang, bro, that ain't even. That's just a you know that's just a that's just like some design and shit. You wishing on what are you wishing for, Bucko? So anyway, I forgot my computer. That's what happens. Here we are. Um. Here we are. What else? What else happened this weekend? Oh, oh, my back went out. I had to go to urgent care. Literally, right when I got home, I drove straight to urgent care, man. My back, this morning, I'm putting my shoe on. Next thing you know, looked like somebody yelled freeze. Remember freeze tag? Somebody yelled freeze and you just had to stop. From the waist up, that's what I was doing. Just buckled down, boy. Just buckled down. Um, Yeah, and that was it, man. Everything's pretty cool. Everything's pretty chill. Uh, I think, but I'm going to need some help. I don't have my computer this episode, so we're going to get Nick in here, um, our lovely producer. uh, Premature premature Nick's going to come in so he can uh, help talk about the questions and things like that. And, uh, and we'll just have a little change of pace for today. Uh, we got Sebastian Maniscalco coming in uh, as a guest this week. Man, that guy, he's so Italian, isn't he? Aka. Aka. That's what he says all the time. Aka. Aka. No, that's not it. Aka. Aka. Um, dude, I was thinking they should have more animals, right? How many animals do they have? 70 animals? Like that's sometimes my, that's one of my issues with God is, bruh, bake another batch, daddy. You know, you got all the capabilities you got. You know, I'd love to see like kind of a unicorn that has uh, Wi-Fi in its horn. That's got that fucking hard hitter on the top, that router. Wouldn't that be great? You can't get Wi-Fi, but suddenly one of these Ucorns shows up. 
And dude, think about a unicorn. That's another thing you don't notice how much magic is in it. That's another type of corn. If, dude, imagine the first unicorn walks up. You know somebody shot that bitch down, bro. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and no offense, man, but somebody really popped that cat down, boy. If you saw a unicorn show up, you'd be like, damn, boy. I mean, there's no way you couldn't think this horse is trying to fuck, boy. This horse is trying to <laughs> in my butt. You know, this horse is into the dark arts. There's no way you couldn't think that. But it's interesting how much magic is in a unicorn. They're probably top six magic animals. I think, anyway, if you had to think about it. Um, I don't even know what we're talking about. Uh, but, yeah, imagine that first unicorn rolls up. Do you sitting there with your buddy? Maybe you guys are having a couple garbanzo beans or, you know, trying to get rid of yellow fever or whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what year it was when they showed up. And next thing you know, this bad bitch rolls up with that bad hell. With that freaking, that top piece, baby. A, a unicorn is basically like a shark. It's like the shark of horses. And, but they got magic in them. You never know how much magic is in a unicorn by looking at it. You just think, damn, this horse is really honestly probably trying to meet some local men. You know, we're trying to do, or trying to pick a lock or something. Or what else? Or trying to just, you know, push a button on an elevator or what else? I don't even know what a horse would do with that horn on its head. You know, hang out, just maybe hang laundry, but like just one shirt. But you don't realize when you see that unicorn how much how much power is in them and how much magic, full of magic. You just don't know, man. People don't know. They don't know the magic that we might have inside of ourselves. They really, really don't know. Uh, let's get Nick in here because I need some help getting through this episode. Sometimes we need some help. And I don't like asking for help. Uh, you know, I don't like it. I don't like asking for help, man. I don't like, I like to do stuff myself. But I can't do that every day, bro. And I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to keep the vibe going. I, we got a good vibe. We're cruising. It's Monday. You're here. I'm here. They had an earthquake in Bali, I saw on Twitter. So, imagine that. Let's shake shit up, bro. Mother Nature's out there making that mixed cocktail, bro. She's shaking it up. Let's see what we can do. Uh, we'll be right back. Um, actually, uh, Nick, you want to come on in? Premature Nick. What's going on? I'm on time. Yeah, you're on time, brother. How are you? Good, good. I'm chilling. How yeah. Was, how was uh? How was your trip? It was it was good, man. It was fast and it was good. It was one show a night, so it's a little bit of a different vibe, like less pressure to like hurry up and get for this get to the second show. Regroup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was time to regroup. Um, but yeah, it was good, man. It, it was a good experience, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for stepping in, dude. I'm sorry, I forgot my computer. It's all good. It's all good. We got multiple here, so. Yeah, good, man. Uh, yeah, let's get into some of the calls, and um, and then if you have some news stuff, let's let's uh, change the vibe a little bit today. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, this first one, uh, we had a couple people calling about this. The Sacramento, it sounded like the Sacramento people got a little rowdy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They had a couple. Um, well, here, they got a call? Yep. All right. Here we go. Hey, Theo. This is Tony from Sacramento. Big Tony. Show. Big Tony, thank you for calling in. That's... And Tony, short for Anthony, I guess. What else you think? Big Tony, maybe? Those are pretty much Antonio. Antonio. Yep, there you go. Spanish Tony. Um, onward. I was at your show last night. I was at your later show last night. And man, I just don't feel very good about my city. We were kind of rude to you, I think. And um, I know you had to tell like like five people to shut up and... It was distracting, and I had one of the balcony seats, and throughout the whole show, there wasn't a single time when anyone was just sitting down and trying to and just watching the show, trying to enjoy it. At any given point, for the whole damn thing, dude, there was like at least two or three people milling about, 
if not more. It was distracting, and it was mm. hard to enjoy your show. And if it was distracting for me, I can only imagine how distracting it was for you. So we were not very nice to you that, that night, and uh, I want to apologize, man, and I hope you still want to come back and see us. Yeah, man. Well, look, I appreciate the call. Yeah, that's uh, the Friday night show. That was, it was, yeah, some guy was yelling. He kept yelling out. At one point, he's yelling, I think, at like one of his wives or something. I don't know what was going on. He might have been Saudi Arabian and they carry a couple wives. Like, you'll ask a Saudi, like a Saudi Arabian guy will reach in his pocket and fucking accidentally drop a couple wives out, you know? Um, but you know what? I did notice that there were constantly people just walking around. I mean, Sacramento also, let's be honest, dude, it's got that sort of a lot of missing people kind of, you know, like a lot of, a lot of missing people are in Sacramento. So I'm amazed sometimes that more people don't know that. So if you're missing somebody, go there and that's where they are. I mean, it's a lot of people you've seen on posters and stuff. They're in Sacramento. Missing animal, Sacramento. Can't find my, has anybody seen my wallet? Sacramento it's all there man um and I just feel bad for the people that's at the show that's trying to enjoy themselves you know that's the part that gets me a little bit but but uh but thank you for the call man it, you know it gets what I don't what makes it tough for me is that I want people to enjoy the show and so if somebody's all wasted and they're just acting like a donkey then that really it doesn't help. So I'm trying to keep the show kind of undonkeyed and keep it tight. But I appreciate the call, Tony. Even though that guy uh, said that and there were a couple other people that called in about some of the rowdy members in the crowd, everybody said they still like really enjoyed the show and you killed and it didn't affect their time. This guy, he was in the balcony a little further away, but most people said they just had an amazing time. It was still a great show. They were just like, some people can't act right. Dang. Yeah, you know, it's funny, and I, and I think we learn that as we go along. It's like, you know, somebody always can't act right. And that, it is wild. It's like, and that, but that's just what it is, you know, and I got to learn also to just vibe better with it. You know, I, I can't control everything that's going to happen, and some people just aren't going to act right sometimes. Fortunately, we were able to, you know, some of the people to toss them out and then get back uh, and then get the wheels back going. But what's tough for me is that there's a good flow to the show. And if it's really flowing and somebody gets really donkeyed out, then it, you know, it kind of kicks the whole show in the ass a little. So, but thank you for your call, Tony. I appreciate it, man. Um, here's a Patreon question, actually, this along the same lines. And this is Kara. She said, how do you keep yourself amped up for your tour performances when you're doing the same thing so often, so many times for different people? Gang. Uh, thank you, Kara, uh, for your support on Patreon and and for this question. Um, you know, it's been tough, and I've actually been talking to other comedians about it. You know, I was talking to Sebastian Maniscalco about it the other day, and uh, and just asking him, you know, how do you keep the material fresh? And because I, I was having some trouble with it a little bit this year. Especially the shows in New York City, I was really just burnt out. Like, I don't want to just get up there and be like a record player or something that just kind of starts and just goes through the th stuff. You know, I want to be in the moment. I want it to be kind of feel like a new experience for the people. And uh, and 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 I just got reminded of that actually the past two weeks. I just started thinking, man, I, you know, I have to have fun in what I'm doing. You know. And I've noticed that for myself over this year even just sometimes I'm just not enjoying it, but it's just because I'm not making that choice. Like I, I, it's up to me if I have fun or not. That's up to me. You know, life's going to throw curveballs and sliders and sometimes it's going to run up. It's just going to run all the way from the pitcher's mound and just put a ball right in your ass, dude. Not even a pitch. And like, what is that? But it's like, it's, it's how I... I choose how I meet the world. And it's almost the same thing for these shows. It's like I choose if I if I just get caught up in letting things just run in a circle. And I don't try to show up and just recognize, hey, tonight is a new experience. We could have a new joke come out of this evening. We could have a new moment. We could embrace what's going on. 
We could talk about what's happening in the city. Um, like I actually started off the show. I didn't even realize this in Vegas with, you know, Ari had went up before me and there was another real funny young fella named Bruce that went up and I was like, man, it's nice to have two white guys in a theater without guns, huh? And, uh, and it was funny. It was crazy, but I didn't even realize it, but it got a big laugh out of the beginning and it got everybody kind of in the vibe. And I didn't know that was going to happen, that I was going to say that. Um, but some of the stories, I just try and keep my attitude open. Like, Hey, like, like I'm telling it to a friend for the first time. Hey, let me have fun telling this because even though it's maybe the hundredth time I've told some of them, this is the first time you're going to hear it. And so if I make it not about myself and I make it about the people that are there, you know, Hey, this is their first time to hear this. Um, that helps. Now with that said, it does get hard to do it over and over again. It gets hard. Some jokes, it's like the punchline. It almost, it's like screeching out of you. You don't even want it to, you don't even want to say it. What was some of the advice from Sebastian? Oh, uh, Sebastian suggesting that you kind of change it up. <laughs> uh, okay. He's like, you know, move it up, uh, change it, doing it. I don't even, that's what yeah. his, that was his whole advice. Like, what did you say, bro? It's like, hey. Dude, Sebastian the other day told me he was taking adult swim lessons. <laughs> <laughs> and it fucking blew my mind. Um, but he'll be on here this week. And I'm going to bring this uh, question back up with him, Kara. Nick, if you'll remind me to help do that. Will do. Um, let's take another call. What came in? Uh, so last week we had the gentleman who called in. Uh, he actually had two voicemails. The first one, he was feeling pretty down, feeling overwhelmed by all his student loans. He called in and uh, said he had a better attitude about it, but we got some some responses to your advice to him to just like ride it out, pay as low as you can, keep lowering the payments, um, and we got some responses to that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's this, this is pretty... Uh, I'm curious to see what some people thought. Thanks. Here's the first one. What up, Theo? This is Tyler from Birmingham, Alabama. Go gang, gang. Gang, gang, brother. I'll see you next week, man. August 15th at the start on, so looking forward to that. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to call about the guy who had a, who was kind of down on himself about the student loan debt. He had some good points. Um, a couple things that I've heard. One, student loan debt is the best line of credit to have. Mm. So, you know, it's not a bad thing to have on your on your credit line. And you can make the minimum payments. You don't. You, there's no timeline in order to pay it back. And I have an old friend that told me one time that, uh, you know, if you if you die before you pay it all back, then you win. So I mean, <laughs> no rush to pay all that shit back. That's hilarious, dude. Yeah, that's a goal, man. <laughs> Look, bro. If that's the case, go get your masters, buddy bear. <laughs> you know, damn. Um. That's a good suggestion. What do you think about that, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of of two minds. Like, it it doesn't hurt your credit score. It's not going to hurt you, like, getting a house or whatever. But part of me is like, oh, you took out an agreement. You should work to pay it back. Even, mm. We look at it as, like, the government. Oh, they're not going to miss it. But still, like, just part of me is like, you should honor your debts. Yeah. Wow, man. It's very... Um, I haven't been doing very, it. Ned Stark of you. <laughs> Very Ned Stark move when it comes to, uh, but you haven't been doing it though. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been doing the whole push it off, push it off. I mean, it was always, I would do the things, they they look at your income, so they'll lower your payments and I've been doing doing that whole thing. But now yeah. that, now I'd like to start chipping away at it at least, or at least make the regular minimum payments to get on some type of foreseeable plan where it's getting paid off but i would feel like an idiot if they get wept away eventually. yeah i mean companies do you know it is interesting how we all think or, or sometimes we think like yeah just because it's a big company or it's the government it's like we don't really owe them mm -hmm. it's almost like this invisible thing it just keeps war that will just keep working mm -hmm. um and that yeah we don't think sometimes like that we made this agreement mm -hmm. like we clicked on the square or whatever and filled it in and then said submit and you're using whatever they gave us or, you know, and then, and then we, when it comes to it later, we're just like, oh, fuck it. It's like almost so, it, we'll, we forget that, we, that yeah, we, we put our name on the line, you know, mm -hmm. that we have some integrity in it. Um, 
It's interesting, man. I, I definitely could say that over my life. I remember the first cell phone bill I ever got. It was for like seven thousand dollars, right? I didn't realize you couldn't just use your phone as much as you wanted. I thought I got this bitch, man. I had a hundred minutes, dude. Okay, <laughs> like a hundred minutes when cell phones came out. It was just enough minutes to really realize you don't you you cannot afford a cell phone, man. Every call you had to be like, hey, it was almost like you were in that movie where you have like uh, there's like a timer and it's gonna blow up or something. <laughs> So it was like uh, every call that came in, you'd have to try and get it. Remember, do you remember that? You used to like write it about 50 seconds. You'd be looking like, all right, man, we got to. My first cell phone plan, I was late to the game because I had to pay for my own cell phone in high school, was um, was unlimited. They had already moved into oh, those wow. type type plans. It was it was the benefit of waiting. But yeah, I mean, my grandma was always worried about her minutes. <laughs> uh, man, she would. <laughs> nights and weekends. That, that, that's what you get. Yeah, nights in. and weekends, boy. <laughs> They'd be like, look, man, I can't call you till after 9 p.m. <laughs> so if you had a friend that was in any other time zone as a kid, you was fucked. You was not friends anymore. Did you, before cell phones, uh, play the collect call game? Um, I would ha- I would have to collect call to go get picked up. And uh, yes. like, I'd be at the Y and it'd be like, it's Nick, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And my grandma would come and pick me up 15 minutes later. Yeah, man, that was awesome. That was always a good move. And the movie theater game, like they had the click over. So how if I was gonna have a if I was gonna have a girl call me back late at night, I would say, okay, you know, at about nine twenty, I'm gonna call a movie theater line. Cause they had like a forty minute message on there and it was like now showing this weekend at seven, uh, The Bodyguard, starring Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. Showtimes are Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Saturday matinee, 2 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday evening, 5, 7, and 9 p.m. And then it would be like, now showing in a theater two. And then it would go on to the next movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Land before time. <laughs> wow, this young dinosaur doesn't know what's going to occur. Starring the voices of, you know, Lou Diamond Phillips. And it would just keep going. So it would be like a 40-minute message. So if you had that call waiting, then you could hear someone calling you the beep and it wouldn't ring in your house. Gotcha. So it would be like, all right, I'm just going to call the movie theater and hope she called. Now, sometimes your girl would fall asleep, you know, because <laughs> bitches be resting. Everybody knows that, dude. If you go looking at nine bitches, probably about two of them's resting. So then you just heard the entire movie Call schedule three or four times, <laughs> and then in my in my dreams that night, it was just the background loop. It was just just me eating popcorn, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what was his question? What was this about? Uh, he was just kind of reiterating your sentiment about the student loans. Uh, just yeah, keep dragging it out. Yeah, keep dragging it out. That's a good, but also yeah, the 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 thing we forget to, though sometimes that yeah we made a deal. You know, we did make a deal. Um, man, big companies do get kind of fucked. Everybody just thinks they can fuck them, mm-hmm. but they also fuck people every chance they get, and That's probably point. probably goes unnoticed. But that oh. doesn't mean we have to act like that. Also. Right, right. Yeah, man, it's it's a real battle. God, I remember. Oh, I remember. I'd send letters to Verizon. I was like, man, fuck y'all, bro, dude. I remember sending pictures of me, f- photographs of me with like this, with my hands in the air, <laughs> holding my pockets out like I have no money. <laughs> I owed seven thousand dollars, dude. <laughs> so, and somebody. Oh, I remember this was the worst. Somebody kept calling me from Africa, bro, and I don't know how they got my number. I don't know how Africa even got a phone at this point. Like, I didn't know they had even had a phone in Africa. But they kept calling me, and I would get charged when I answered it, you know? Did you guys talk? Huh? Did you guys talk? Like- yeah, sometimes, but it was so hard to know what was going on, bro. It was Africa, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Africa's pretty wild, and imagine Africa on the phone. Maybe it was that You know cult- what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Africa calls, bro, I'm not saying don't answer, bro, but, you know, maybe, you know, just maybe don't answer every time. Exactly. exactly. Uh, let's take another call, man. All right. This one is uh, who is listening. Oh, you're, good. You're always asking who's listening. Yeah. Theo, my man, it's your boy Bo from Indiana. Big Bo, Indiana, dude. And that is uh, that is Spanish for Indian, first of all. And also, beautiful place, dude. You know, sort of. Hit or miss out there in the middle of America. Dude, a lot of good people out there. You know, a lot of vaudeville used to, was in Indiana. A lot of young, they'd have children learning to juggle and do 
a lot of stunts. A lot of stunt people come out of that area. It's a real stunt country. So, you know, you'll see a fucking newborn, you know, go back into its mama and try and get shot out of her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of people doing real kind of artsy stuff. Onward. Working that graveyard shift as a county deputy trying to fight that crime. That G-yard, baby. Shoot them. <laughs> Want to thank you for your entertainment. During my downtime, man, it gets kind of slow out here. I've also been t- tuning in to King and Sting. Your boy Brendan isn't too bad of a fellow, man. You guys make a good combo. Thank kind you. Kind of reminds me of a Nick Jonas that, that stopped taking out of picks. You feel me? Who's I that, Nick my Jonas? Man, gang, gang. See ya. Yeah, Nick Jonas that stopped taking Adipex? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, he looks like him. I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brendan has a very rare, rare look, man. One of the best things I ever heard about Brendan, I read this on a uh, on comments somewhere. Brendan looks like the kind of guy that rides with both of his legs off the same side of a horse. <laughs> 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 man, that was good. I like the one at one of the first roast my hosts on King of the Sting, one of the segments uh, you guys do on that show. It was, he looks like a Puerto Rican baseball coach that's always flexing his ass at their <laughs> oh, face yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Brendan has some fucking tight pants, dude. <laughs> Bro, I've seen that dude whisper into his pants before, so you know there's something hectic going on. Um, thank, you, thank you for your service out there, deputy. And I think, look, man, nighttime, middle of the night, after 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., you guys should get a couple of free bullets out there. You know what I'm saying? Pop off a couple times, right? You know? Because here's the thing. If you shoot a bullet up in the air in the distance, and it just hits, some of that's on the Lord, bro, you know? If it hits somebody, man. Indi- Indiana and roulette. Yeah, that Indiana roulette, baby. Pop off, daddy. Stay safe out there, brother. Uh, and thank you uh, for the call. Dude, I was thinking... Before you came in here, man, I was talking. I was thinking about potential. Do you, whenever you were growing up, did you feel like you had a lot of potential, Nick? Or what? What does potential mean? If I have to think about that, what does it mean? Uh, yeah, just the ability to do more than what you're currently doing, kind of. And uh, I, I always thought I did. Um, yeah, I was always really unsure of what I was going to try, but like I just felt like when I compared myself to other people, I was, I was just like. I'm better. I, I, or I like. Or I would not see, better, but I would see people in positions where they are. I was like, well, I could do that, kind kind of at, at least. Right. Because uh, uh, that's a good point. I could do that at least. Mm-hmm. Right. So I have potential to do that. Maybe more than that, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Or an advanced state of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just been thinking. I was thinking about potential earlier. And just like, where does like potential come from, or what is it? You know. Um. Well, look it up. Will you mind looking it up? Mm-hmm. Potential. I'm going to think about it real quick. Uh, yeah, I guess the a bit you could. Because people, that's one thing that people, I mean, I guess people can recognize your potential. People say that a lot, you know. Or, you know, you'll hear that term. Uh, recognize your potential. Uh, what does it say, brother? Having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was thinking about popcorn at the beginning of this and how you don't want to know. Think about that, dude, popcorn. You would never guess it's in there. Mm -hmm. You would never guess it, dude, if you looked at it. If you looked at a corn, bro, and you wrote down 200 things that could be in there, (laughs) none of them would be popcorn. All the things I wrote down would be smaller than what's in that. (laughs) Right, so that's kind of potential, (laughs) you know? Yeah, man, I guess that, you know what's funny? I guess I see potential in people. I guess if you see, if you, if, it's really kind of cool if you can see, if you do see, if you see potential in somebody, that's kind of like a neat way to look at people, I think. I'm, I, I don't do it all the time for sure. I forget about it a lot. But looking for somebody's potential. Um, yeah, I wonder if you have to, I wonder if potential is something that other people have to say, oh, I, f- I feel like you have potential. Or if somebody tells you that, it definitely makes you feel good. Yeah, that's I, a big compliment or that's a big thing because it makes you feel motivated that you can do more. I think a lot of potential is mindset and you can get that mindset from like other people reinforcing it, telling you, and then you're like, oh, I can do this. And so then you give an attempt at it. But like, if you don't... 
I think that's why like there's kind of like a malaise in like poor neighborhoods or whatever. People don't think they have the potential to escape, but when someone from their area ends up succeeding they they see, Oh, that's possible for me too. And it opens up a world of possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. That potential when you see somebody doing something and it makes you feel like, Oh, I can do that. I could be that guy. Yeah. It almost ignites a part of you. That's, um, I wonder if in the future there'll be a medicine that, or something that, that makes your potential kind of flare up, you know, or just reminds you that you have it. I guess I need to just remember that. Just try and notice people's potential more. Um, yeah, I don't think I do a good job of that sometimes. I think I could probably do better. Because I think, yeah, if you let people know, man, you have a lot of potential. You know, I really see this potential and even call out things they do. That that really makes people feel good, huh? Yeah. You know, when people do that, I, I, I've noticed just in my own life when people say that. Especially like if an older person says that to you when you're younger and stuff. Man, you have so much, you have so much potential. You know, I really see so much potential in you. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was just thinking about popcorn earlier. Um, let me say this, man. Internet privacy is basically dead. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at porn, for instance. Did, did you know that the, that the UK government passed a law requiring you to hand over your ID before you can access porn sites? Oh, Jesus. You're fucked, Nick. <laughs> if you go abroad, bro. <laughs> But here, you're just watching fucking and you're still okay. <laughs> That's right. Like your driver's license or passport. Dude, that would be crazy if you had to put something on the line every time you went to watch porn. I bet a lot less people would do it. Um, it's only a matter of time before your government gets the same idea. And what happens when your favorite porn site gets hacked like Ashley Madison did? All those names and IDs will be floating around waiting to get published on the web. Uh, and I'm going to let everyone know right now that I've been on a decent amount of porn sites. Not very much in the last year. You know, the dark arts have really quit drawing themselves um, in front of me in that in that area. But I've definitely looked at some naughty stuff on there. You know, certainly a lot of female on female, a lot of butt stuff probably, and even some double butt. And so I just want to let people know what I've done in case anything ever comes out. But what I'm saying right now is that you have to protect your internet usage with ExpressVPN. Accessing the internet with ExpressVPN means the websites you visit won't know where you're coming from. They shield your identity. ExpressVPN is the best way to make your online activity anonymous, and it's the VPN provider that I trust to protect my data. And I'll say this, when I was in, when I was in China, I had to use a VPN to access uh, the internet, to access sites that I wanted to, um, to sneak around so the government didn't see you trying to do it, so you couldn't get in trouble. Um, you can use ExpressVPN every time you go online, and you should. Download the ExpressVPN app on your computer or phone, push one button, and voila, you're protected. For less than $7 a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I have. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN ser service by Tech Radar and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's definitely time. Um, I mean, I worry a lot of times, Nick, it's like I'll think, Man, here they go. I do. I know that years from now, all of our truth is going to come out. Like the things we look at, you know, the things we've seen, the things we've Googled. Jeepers, man. You know, jeepers, man. I mean, I, I should do one day just all the things that I've Googled and how I feel about them now. <laughs> um, it's time to stop Big Brother and surveillance of your online activity. Protect yourself today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash Theo. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash T-H-E-O for three free months with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash Theo to learn more. Also, if you're hiring people, it used to be hard. Multiple job sites, all these resumes. What is this? This resume has coffee on it. It's a confusing review process, but today hiring can be easy, and you only have to go to one place to get it, ziprecruiter.com slash TPW. So, Nick, if you ever don't work here anymore, that's where I'm going to go find someone. Nice. Pretty nice. cool, huh? Yeah, I bet you can find someone really quick. Well, yeah. Probably not as good as you, though, man. Thanks. 
You see potential in me. Oh, yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I do. I, I should probably express that to you more. Uh, Zip Recruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, Zip Recruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. Zip Recruiter is so effective. God, it's effective, dude. I mean, it's like the Tony Gwynn of helping you find somebody for employment. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash TPW. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TPW. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Man, I almost wanted to get some cocaine in Las Vegas, bro. That's the place. God. I felt like, you ever walk past one of those places and they're cooking fudge in there? <laughs> and they put it on the counter and they like cut it up and there's like somebody's back there by a big kettle. I'm like, they should have one of those, but for cocaine, like what you can walk by in Vegas. Yeah, I don't even know the process of cocaine. It'd be educational too. Would be cool, huh? Yeah. And they're back there just listening to some music. Beans don't burn on the grill. <laughs> it took a whole lot of trying in. <laughs> Just to get up that <laughs> hill, uh, yeah, man. I'm, I, I'm, I feel pretty fortunate. I fought the desire, though. Yeah, glad you didn't. Damn, bro. I still just want that white monkey to climb up into my fucking face, bro. But um, anyhow, what else? Yeah, this week I'll be in uh in Memphis, and a lot of shows, man. Memphis, Birmingham, Atlanta, Louisville, and somewhere else. I don't even know. That's a crazy thing. Memphis, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't even know. It's like 10 shows this week all across the Southland. Um, I'm definitely fired up. I think almost everything's sold out except for the second show in Biloxi, in, uh, in Birmingham. Uh, do you think I recognize your potential, Nick, or not? Yeah. I'll be honest, man. I think so. I mean, I think just in the position you gave me, I mean, there's... You need the potential to be able to do do it. So, yeah, I think so. And we talk about future plans and st- some of the stuff we can accomplish. So, yeah, that gives me uh, encouragement that you see it in me. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, I but, think. But, yeah, tell me more how much potential I have. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> let me think, man. I think... Um, I think you. I think you definitely exceeded my expectations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I don't mean that in a bad way or anything, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think there's times, yeah, you definitely expe- exceed my expectations. When I know when I'm in a place of like feeling grateful, I usually, I'll often think, man, I'm grateful for Nick, you know? Oh, thanks, man. So the hard part for me sometimes is just getting in that place of gratitude generally. Um, but I think when you tell someone, uh, that they do have potential too. There's part of them like you on the receiving end of it, you want to live up to that. So it like makes you work harder. Right. Like you're like, Oh, he's, I better, I better live up to those expectations or, or thoughts he has. So you work harder. So yeah. Um, just in general, telling that to people can help. Yeah. 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 I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. That's probably how, like why some teachers are good and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because when they make a student feel that way, I think sometimes you just don't know like what's, you know, sometimes you, but sometimes a teacher could say that a million times. You could say it for years and none of them ever kind of cracked the surface. It just doesn't land. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then you'll, it's just, it's almost like it has to be a certain matchup too between two people Mm -hmm. and time, you Mm -hmm. know, when it, when it really, when you're willing to hear it as well and it really lands on you and you get inspired. Um, I think also uh, one thing we've done, and I think it's like each other pushing each other, this podcast keeps evolving in a number of ways because we're always, it doesn't have to be the same week to week. And I think that's that's part of it. Yeah. No, well, that's, I mean, that's good to hear because I know, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, I think sometimes I, I, I want to like try things different. I get like a little bit afraid, I guess. Um but yeah, I think, yeah, there is some evolution. You know, we've moved to some different studios. Um, you know, we've taken, 
you know, it's a lot of times where I'll just take your suggestion. Mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, do you ever feel like you can't make suggestions and stuff? Never. That's, that's an awesome thing about yeah. working in this environment. Yeah. We can say whatever they, sometimes they're you, sometimes they're not. But I mean, with this whole studio, like our layout and stuff, we, we went back and forth and it became, it's a mishmash of both our, our kind of visions for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true, huh? It's taken a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, it was, it's been a learning process for me, just kind of a project management, like, because like basically what's holding us up now, we've got construction people ready to go put, put in cords, but I'm trying to talk to engineers who are taking longer than I thought. Mm. And and in the future, that stuff, before we even got the contractor in here, I would have had everything finished. And that's like what's holding us up at the moment. But I mean, we're still functional, but I want to be like plug and play. Yeah. And it would make my job easier because we're moving stuff back and forth for the guest episodes, the solo episodes and stuff, and eventually it'll get a lot easier. No, that's good to hear, man. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been crazy in here, man. It's been it's definitely been unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just coming along. It's just, uh, and you've done a lot of it, man. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, all right, let's get into a couple more a couple more calls. I'm sorry that I forgot the computer today, guys, but I'm glad we have a little bit of a change of pace, man. It takes a little stress off of me. I've just been feeling stressed and, uh, you know, and I know I say that all the time, And it, but some of it's just like, you know, once we started King and the Sting and then, the, you know, doing this past weekend twice a week, sometimes with guests, it's just a lot of output. And then in my head, I started thinking, man, I'm boring people and there's nothing to talk about or... um so it's good to have a change of pace, you know, and it's good to have somebody in here. And it's interesting to talk about potential, man. It's interesting to talk about, you know, how you and I interact too. We've never really dis I mean, we discuss it some, mm -hmm. but yeah, sometimes I feel like I could do a better job. I mean, I know like sometimes I'll get pissed. I'll wake up in the morning pissed mm -hmm. and the first person, the only person that works for me is you. <laughs> so the only person I can fucking take it out on is you. Um, so I'm sure that gets stressful, man. How, what's that like to deal with? I kind of have like a, a mantra. I'm like, don't let other people's mood affect mine. Like go in, just go in with the same attitude every day. Try to try to be positive and like work harder. But like, like I said, don't, don't let other people's like energy mess up my energy. Come in positive and like focused yeah. and, and just do that every day. Um, kind of like you said, you don't, uh, last week it was all about expectations and stuff. And like, I can't have expectations for the people who work around me. I can just know if I'm doing my job sincerely, I'm attempting the best I, I can, then I just got to let other stuff slide off my back. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting us slide off your back sometimes, man. I usually, if I feel like I'm out of line, I try to come back and I feel like I usually get around pretty quick on like bringing yeah. it, bringing that up Yeah, yeah. and letting you know if I felt like I was, you know, you know, rude or you know um but yeah man you're just like the only person in my you know you're the closest person in my life in some instances so you fucking gotta hear all the shit I, I feel you but i don't know i i none of it is like i put myself in your shoes like your life over the past 18 months like it it's it's fucking it's wild like yeah. it's it's completely different you're like you said, you're gonna sell like 150 thousand tickets or whatever this month like yeah this year or this year uh and yeah it's crazy that that's a wild thought. And like looking at your tour schedule for fall, it's wild. And I'm sure just looking at what's ahead, uh, that is where the stress comes from. Not as much as like what you're doing in the moment. It's just yeah. knowing it's like a Sisyphean battle. It's always uphill. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, yeah, it's, it's definitely been interesting. And so then it's just learning who I am in those spaces, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and learning like, uh, you know, and learning that there's some things I like about me in those, in those, uh, as this, uh, things has, has gotten busier and there's some things that I don't, um, you know, one of the things though is sometimes with my mood, the mood that I, you know, when I get agitated, if things aren't a certain way and stuff, but I appreciate you putting up with me, man. No problem. You know? No problem. And I definitely uh, see a lot of your potential, man. And, um, you know, I know I'm fortunate to be able to work with you. Thanks brother. I, I feel fortunate as well. I think you have the potential to be the biggest comedy star in the world. So thanks man only going up you're going to be selling out msg like uh sebastian what motto sonium gluten glutamate <laughs> yeah. that shit that's fucking killing gonna, asians bro you're gonna quit comedy and start selling <laughs> chemicals i could see that bro 
God, that would be good, dude. <laughs> Just roll around with a big tank of it on the truck. <laughs> Come over here, boy. Let me get a couple squirts of this under your tongue. It sells itself. Yeah, it really does, bro. It's so good. <laughs> dude, if you order just MSG, bro, from Israel or one of these other places, bro, <laughs> fuck the food, man. Fuck the bok choy, dog. Just put this shit under your tongue, dog, and look for the Lord. Bye -bye. Um, all right, let's take another question or two, man. All right. Hey, Theo. Um, my name's Sophia. I was born with a condition that um, affects every system of my body, and I have been chronically ill my entire life. Oh, God. I think I had that. I think it was my mother, actually, when I was young. Um, and now it's just myself bothering every system of my body. Um, I'm sorry to hear about that. I appreciate your call, uh, and thank you for sharing that with us. What's going on? And some of the main symptoms are... <laughs> Uh, overwhelming sadness and anxiety and things that really keep me from being able to socialize very well. Mm. And uh, I'm about to go to a concert, and I, I, ha I don't get out of the house much. So I, uh, I'm stressing being around people, mm. and I'm fearing judgment. I, j I just watched your podcast um, where you talked about thinking about what other people are thinking about you and when I go out in public I had to, I have to do a lot of things to be able to take care of myself and sometimes I worry what other people think of me and it's really stressful so um, knowing you know that there's other people out there that are going through that same thing god damn to anybody else out there with chronic illness whether or not you know you have it what's going on in your body know that you're not alone and that it's always okay to express your emotions, and it's always okay to tell someone that you have to step back, yeah. set your boundaries. Um, thank you so much, Theo. Yeah. I adore you. Dang, dang. Well, thanks for uh, the sweet uh, call. Yeah, I could definitely feel. Yeah, it makes me. It makes me. You know, it makes me think that you're pretty brave to call and share that you know that takes a lot of bravery i mean it makes you feel like you're on the front lines of your own emotions and feelings and you're battling that and that anxiety yeah it's so tough you know you go somewhere and you think that everybody already doesn't like you before they get there and they've already made this decision in their in their heads or you know you just get so scared of like just being out and about and you know i get scared of looking in people's eyes sometimes because i feel like they knew that i was they could see something inside of me that was wrong and I didn't even know what it was and or they could see that I was weak or I don't know I just yeah I, I just I, I know that that's really painful um, and I know that that's really brave though of you you know and to, to to say look you know I'm still I'm gonna pack up who I am and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go see this band or I'm gonna go and 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 apply for this job or I'm gonna go and and uh and I'm just gonna take action. Um and you know it's so funny when you we will you play the beginning of the call again, Nick? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey Theo, um my name's Sophia. I was born with a condition that um affects every system of my body and I have been chronically ill my entire life and some of the main symptoms are uh, overwhelming sadness and anxiety and things that really keep me from being able to socialize very well and uh, I'm about to go to a concert and I, I, ha I don't get out of the house much so I, uh, I'm stressing being around people and I'm fearing judgment i i just watched yeah just really you really hit you really hit me in the heart right there um yeah because you're just fearing judgment and you know why it kind of makes me sad i think when i really think about it i can relate to that <clears throat> but it also makes me sad because i know that i'm judgmental sometimes you know i know that i'm as much as i don't want to be i i am you know, that I judge others because it makes me feel a little bit separate. And that distance, that space gives me the space I need to then put up my guard and to be okay, you know. And, uh, 
you know, and you calling and saying that, I think it, it reminds me that that I can always be of service somehow. If I'm at a concert, if I'm walking down the hall, if I am, no matter what I'm doing, I can always be of service to someone. Or I always, there's always an opportunity. Because there's gonna, probably going to be, you know, a lot of other people at the concert. And none of them may know what you're going through. May know, but some of the, somebody may get a feeling when they're around you. Oh, maybe I should just check in with this person, see how they're doing, or just you know, it's like uh, you know, you are an opportunity for other people to express the best part of themselves. You know, a part that's very caring. Um, and man, what if God made you as a gift? Like a, a, God made you as this, basically this opportunity that's wandering around. You know, that you have this opportunity, like you are this opportunity. That when people, you know, when people care and show that, you know, reach out to you or somebody like you or just let, help you to feel okay, that, that they are then going to feel so good about themselves. And so that's really wild because you, that's like a, you have the potential oddly to make people feel really good because if people know that you're struggling and then they're, they're able to, you know, just help be a part of a little bit more of your joy or comfort, then that's really going to make them realize a potential that they didn't have inside of themselves. Um, what do you think, Nick? Yeah, she has the potential to make other people feel good about themselves and other people who are in her same position, her facing these fears and going out into public. It shows other people who are suffering from whatever she is that they can do it too and you can live a fulfilling life and not let whatever ailment you have hold you back. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy how we've gotten so trapped inside of ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, I do believe that the cure-all for everything can be helping others. And if you can find a way in your life, and even in those moments when you are struggling the most and most anxious and everything, to just try and be of helpful to someone else that I think for it, it can offer you some peace where, where, we, where we don't think about ourselves. You know, when we're thinking about somebody else, it's really hard to think about ourselves. Um, it's really almost impossible. Um, but yeah, I, I just appreciate... I just appreciate you calling because... You know, you just reminded me of uh, of feelings. You reminded me of feelings and that people have them and that we're all struggling somehow. You know, we're all struggling. We're all struggling somehow. And for you to be brave enough to say that and share it, man, for some reason in some weird space inside of me or not even a weird space but an okay space, it makes me feel like there's hope. You know, it makes me feel hopeful. Because if you can share that, you feel that way, then, then I know that it's okay for me to feel that way a little bit. And when I acknowledge that I feel sometimes like so worried about what other people are thinking or I feel so afraid or I feel, you know, like people are judging me so much and there's nothing that I can do that's ever going to make me feel okay. When I feel those, you know, when I feel some of those things that... Man, I lost my train of thought, but I really was enjoying being on the tracks. Um, when you share that you're not feeling well, it activates a part of me, inside of me, that also has the same fears and same uncertainty. And maybe not the same level of illness that you suffer from, but part of it. A little of it. I can really relate. And when I can relate, it makes me feel not alone. And so thank you because you did that for me a little bit. You know, you you made me feel a little bit more okay to uh, to be brave even if I'm not okay. Um, you're a sweetheart, and I hope you had fun at the concert. And when I come close, I hope you'll come out and be my guest at my show. And uh, and just thank you because you just I, I just needed something today to make my life feel, you know, I know it's selfish, but I just needed something to remind me about what's important, and that's each other. And um, 
and you just did that for me. So, man, or lady, sorry. Uh, you, you're doing more than you know. Uh, be good to yourself. You know, you deserve it. I know that. And I'm going to try doing the same thing for myself. And we can do it. You know, we can do it. Um, that's kind of the episode, I guess, today, Nick. How do you feel, man? Thanks for coming in here. I thought it was great. Yeah. Lots of feeling. Yeah, lots of important stuff. And I need this, you know. And I'm so grateful that, uh, you know, I'm just, I don't know. why. I'm trying to figure out a little bit more of my feelings from that girl's call. Well, I, I guess it's just amazing. It's like, you know, a whole, you know, an hour of chatting and this and that. And and the thing that really just vibes, the the, the, the vibration really, you know, I really got something whenever we're, whenever I was listening to her call, you know, just kind of made me feel something. Um, it's powerful. It's so powerful that we can, that, that, that that can happen, even through electronics and everything, you know, through a voicemail, not even through an actual, you know, in-person touch interaction that you can feel people's feelings you know that transmission that's powerful you know the power of just each other it's very very powerful man we got a lot of potential here in this podcast don't we nick yes we do um and we're lucky to have it and that's us and that's you and that's everybody so uh be good to yourselves gang and um i'm gonna go eat some dinner dude and get some rest bro you feel me what are you gonna do nick I'm going to edit this episode. <laughs> there we go, man. Unlimited potential here <laughs> in this guy, man. And he was premature, man, and he freaking exceeded expectations, dude. That guy was in the incubator for how long, dude? Good, good three weeks. Unbelievable, I bro. I say. <laughs> Unbelievable. Everybody knew him from now, uh, from around there, man. Against all odds. Against all odds, bro. Do you remember that movie about the black football player when we were young? It was on all the time. It was on all the time. It was like Larry Gray or something. It was like Mario Van Peebles played in it. No. God, it was good. What was that movie? It was on all the time, man. And he was like against all odds. Radio? No. <laughs> no radio was pretty good. Are though. you comparing me to radio? <laughs> no, not at all, man. Well, maybe so. That got a lot of potential, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we all got some popcorn in us, man. You know, we all got some popcorn. They don't see it. They don't see it. Look, they think we just a little yellow chunk, bro. Let them see that. But bam, bro, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Orville Red Knocker, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm at your door, baby, with capabilities. And uh, we'll go out with some, um, With uh, let's go out with uh, Making It by Bishop Gunn. Gang, gang, man, be good to yourselves. And I ain't made a dollar, I ain't spent, but where it's going ain't killed me yet. I still get where I'm bound to go. I'm making it, I'm making wrong feel right. I'm making it, and if hell's where I'm headed, then. Making good time And most all of my plans Slip right through my hands And wind up next to me Broken on the ground if this bottle was an hourglass, I'd say that I'm about an hour past the minute. I should have put it down. But I'm making it. I'm making wrong feel right. I'm making it. And if hell's where I'm headed there, I'm making good time.
Almost hear mama pray for my restless soul.